Welcome, everybody, to Dead Talk Live, and today we are joined by star Anna Camp and director Thomas Marchese from the movie From Black, which is going to be uh, streaming exclusively on Shudder April 28th. Anna, Thomas, welcome so much. Thank you for being on the show. Congratulations on this movie, which I really, really enjoyed. Such a great take on a really unique story and we're going to get right to it Anna. i want to go ahead and start with you your character cora is a recovering drug addict she kicks the habit after the tragedy of losing her son and you know that's not how it normally happens a trauma a tragedy leads people into addiction how did you approach that reversal well, I think it's in a pivotal scene in the beginning of the movie, we get to see her in her group therapy session, um, where for the first time she's really talking out loud about what has happened. And we get to hear her say that she told herself that she would be sober by the time her son came back to her. So she's made this kind of deal and bargain with herself that if she gets better, I think it goes to show that she would give anything to get her child back. Yes. So she's literally done everything she can, including probably one of the hardest things that she's ever had to do, which was to quit her drug addiction in order to get her child back. So I think um, it just goes to show that she would go to very great lengths um, to get to see her son again. And any parent can totally understand that aspect now thomas getting into the heads uh, i mean you know before we get to that i want to talk about the lighting the scenery and especially the score to this film which is really great um did you know exactly how you wanted to shoot this film or was there some trial and error that you did on set to get it just the way you wanted um no, we we knew exactly exactly how we wanted to shoot it. Uh, the our cinematographer Duncan Cole is a mad genius. He uh, he came over from New Zealand, and the guy's just got such an incredible eye and and just such a. I'm a DP as well, so mm-hmm. on on one hand, you know, the coming from the one man band world, that kind of thing is really difficult to hand off to somebody but this was so effortless because he's just incredible and it was really uh it was fun to have a common language and and design the film together but we spent a ton of time in prep um mm-hmm. to make sure that we were you know dialed as you were di- but, yeah. as, as you were directing this did you find yourself going back into that cinematographer mode at all uh, not so much in that, like, I, I'll, I'll just never be one of those directors. It's like, yeah, I need a medium from over there. Like I'm always, I want to see, you know, I, I want to see what's, what's down the lens. And I, and, and, uh, but, but with somebody like Duncan, it was really collaborative. It was just really great. There was never, ever any tension because he clearly is, is a world's more talented than, than I am. If anything, it just, uh, you know, allowed us to have a, a common language, like I said. Excellent. Now, Anna, uh, the loss of a child is extremely difficult, goes without saying. The circumstance in which Noah, uh, Cora's uh, child, disappears adds an enormous amount of guilt to Cora's character. Uh, because, yeah, it's hard to say, but it is partially your fault, Cora's fault. Mm-hmm. Now, how did you get into that mind space uh, of Cora? having to deal not only with the loss of her son, but her actually being partly responsible for it. Well, um, it's a very difficult place to put yourself as an actor, but it's it's actually a huge gift that I was given um, when I read the story and I read the script to get to be able to play all of these horrible things it was actually something I was looking for as an actress. So 
when I'm in that space, I'm, I'm basically, you know, thinking about, I'm not one of those actors that uses substitution, right? Where I'm like, oh, my dog died. Like, I'm going to put this here. And like, you know, that's not what I was doing. So I really, you know, and Thomas has heard me say this before, but I really like spent some time with Trey, the young actor mm -hmm. playing Noah. I was lucky enough to shoot some scenes with him very early on, I think like the first day. Um, and I got to like really figure out like what he was like as a kid and like find things about him that I loved and listen to his voice and really kind of put myself as if, if I was his mother, you know, how would I feel if this particular actual person, if Trey was just gone, if he had just vanished from the face of the earth and if it was my fault that that had happened and you just kind of breathe that in and let that sort of sink into your soul. Yeah. And for me, it became very, you know, not easy, but I, I tapped into that because as an actor, I'm trained to really, you know, tap into my emotions and be very open. And, you know, the the atmosphere on set, they created a very safe space for me to, to be. And I would, you know, put my headphones on and I had a song that I would play over and over and over that put me into that that space emotionally wow. um and it was it was a real it was heartbreaking it was really heartbreaking actually every day to be on that set but it was also exciting because i don't get to play roles like that normally watching you on on in this movie i don't know if it's because i'm a parent as well i really sympathize with cora's character i mean and a lot of parents watching this are going to connect especially those who have suffered this terrible loss with Cora. Now, Thomas, uh, from Black, as a lot of other movies do, start after the events have transpired, and then it's told to us through Cora's narrative, talking to her sister, who's also a cop. Uh, when that started, and we she started going into the story, I didn't expect to see Cora present day until the very end again. Well, that's not how you did it. We see <laughs> the present day frequently throughout the film. Uh, what made you shoot it that way or tell the story in that fashion? Well, honestly, uh, the way that it, the final cut is actually even more linear than it used to be. It used to jump around even more. Um, uh, very early on, we knew uh, th this was going to be a much smaller movie initially, like three, four years ago. And I knew that I needed to kind of uh, hop around a little bit to, uh, you know, to keep uh, the audience's attention when this was going to be a, just a teeny, teeny, teeny little movie. But then luckily it, um, so that's why that started the nonlinear storytelling, because I wanted to make sure to have as many, uh, yeah. you know, hooks to keep you interested as possible. But a then, you know, a small budget kind of breeds, bigger and bigger. a small budget breeds innovation. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, I'm, I'm, definitely, definitely. I'm sorry to cut you off. Go on. No, no, not at all. And, and then when the budget ended up climbing somewhere to where, wow, we're going to be able to do something really exciting with this, then, you know, all those elements were already in place. So that's very nice. Uh, Anna, Abel, your scene counterparts throughout the whole movie uh, is, well, you know, an amazing job that he did. Uh, he's the leader of Cora's uh, gr grief group, you know, mm -hmm. during the group session, Cora only talks once, and we gather that because we get to see the moment that you tell the story on Noah's birthday. Do you feel Abel's character would have approached Cora if she had just stayed silent and never said anything? Or was it her speech on Noah's birthday that made him come out and approach her? I think it was definitely her speech on Noah's birthday. Um, I think that that I think that whether or not we know that Abel knew what had happened to her son, that opened the door. That was the first crack that let some light out for Abel to be able to to able for able to be able <laughs> <laughs> to come in um, and approach her. It was it was her basically, you know, opening the door for him. So I think that that's why that scene is so pivotal and so important is that it really sparks the entire rest of the film. And John Ailes did an amazing job as Abel. Did you guys click right away? Was was the chemistry just there? 
Yes, 100%. I had actually um, met John in a movie that we did earlier, a Western, but we had no scenes together. Yeah. And we could always walk by each other and I'd be like, I want to act with you, man. I got to figure out something I can do with you because you're so talented. I, I just know it. Um, and then the same producer of that movie produced from black um, and she brought us together and immediately we had a fantastic table read where I just knew, my God, this is the scene partner of my dreams. I was so excited because he was so talented and so present and so calming, but also so surprising. He's one of the most, he's one of the greatest actors I've ever gotten to work with. So it was from the get-go that we knew something really special was going on between us. And I really trusted him yeah. right at the beginning, which is really, really needed, especially for a movie like this. Now, Thomas Abel, when we first meet him in the group, he's like every other group leader that we see in movies, right? Very open. We want to, do you have anything to say? But then for the rest of the film, he is like this completely different person. I, I really noticed that from the first moment we meet him from the rest of the film. Was that done intentionally or is it just me? Well... Well, we're getting we're getting a little we're tiptoeing towards spoilers. Yeah, yeah, here. we're uh, we're not um, going to get into spoilers. No, but I, 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 it, interestingly, I think that there's kind of three incarnations of him, in fact, throughout the movie. But um, yeah, you know, at, at, when we first the, when we very first meet him, he's in the group setting. He's you know he's playing the shepherd. He's 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 he's, he's there with his with his flock, and he's kind of. Um, you know he's being that guy and yeah. then i think you know and then he finds kind of a kindred spirit in cora and then they um they've got this shared trauma that they kind of um bond over you know they bond over yeah, yeah. now anna yeah, definitely. uh when abel comes to your check up on you because you miss group at the i believe he comes to your workplace and whenever he presents you with this fantastical idea that your reaction is to blow him off, kick him out of the house or whatnot. Why does she seek him out again? Is it just the 0.001% chance that she might get what she wants? I mean, what makes her go back to him? I think what makes her go back to him is just hope. I think she has hope. I mean, if your child was missing, I mean, if you're presented with this opportunity, like at first, of course, you're going to be a skeptic. You're going to go, what is this? This is bullshit. But I think there comes a moment where she's just like, what if, what if, yeah. if there's a, even if there's like a 0.2% chance that maybe, maybe even in her soul and her mind, she like thinks she can hear him. You know what I mean? But that's comfort enough. You know how people go to these psychics that claim that they can make contact yeah. with loved ones who have passed away. I think it's a similar thing with her to where she's seeking out comfort that her child is okay. Because I know that I would do absolutely anything. Yeah. I, whether it's just a sign, whether it's like you get to see like a leaf fall on the specific moment that like, you're like, that means something to me. She's looking for anything. Any kind of hope to cling on to. Yeah. Thomas, the way you segmented the film, giving sort of, uh, names to the different chapters. I, I love how you did that. And for me as the audience, it actually drew drew me into the ritual that was being done. Uh, were those the motivations behind it? Or did you have completely different reasons why you wanted to sort of title each different segment of the well, ritual film? Uh, I, I don't know if it was a... Uh, I just like the idea of starting that once the actual ritual has commenced, you know, once they start taking steps towards doing this thing, I liked kind of the buildup of, um, cause those to me are not uh, more than just being separate little vignettes or whatever they're they're It's a, we're building towards something, right. Whether that's something horrific, something, you know, whatever that's going to be. But um, I just like the notion of, of, of it helping build towards something if okay. that's did that answer your question but yeah that yeah. was basically the purpose behind it yeah no it totally makes sense uh, anna you are pre during 
a part of the movie, you're presented to eat this uh, mystery meat. Okay, mm. let's just label it that. It's yes. labeled as flesh, blood, bone, and then there's like a cup of blood. Uh, Cora is very resistant, as anybody would be, to eating this mystery meat. Um, but having gone so far <laughs> and seeing so much of what has happened, so you know, in mm -hmm. during this uh, experience, why does this? particular event cause her to hesitate so much well a i think it's pretty disgusting it is. <laughs> <laughs> um i don't know if yeah cora might have like a weak stomach um also i think storyline wise you know she's done all of these things and she still hasn't seen noah so i think she's starting to doubt if this whole thing is going to work yeah She's been following directions. She's been, you know, we don't want to spoil, but she's been chained to the floor. She's done all of the things and she still hasn't seen him, heard him, had anything. So I think her doubts are really beginning to creep in that this is even going to happen. You know what went uh, And also just, just oh, really quick, just, just to keep it really vague, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, uh, the part that you're talking about she really does try and it's it ends up being just too vile like yeah. it's not it's not a matter of as much of rejection as it is just she, she just can't do it so anyway for so me moving on less spoilery for me putting myself in Cora's uh shoes looking at it i'll be like is this animal or human <laughs> that would be the first thought that would cross my mind. Um, now, Thomas, you co-wrote the script with uh, Jessup Flower. Did you do, mm -hmm. did the two of you do a lot of research into the occult and rituals uh, to try to get the accuracy as best as you could? Tell us how that worked out. Um, anyone into the occult will be disgusted right now, but uh, almost zero. We, we wanted to... Uh... <laughs> we wanted to make sure that it, it it was something just unto itself. And, uh, you know, we wanted to make sure the real world elements were as realistic and grounded as possible. And, and we knew with my background, we knew that that would be the case. And then as far as the, the ritual and the, the occult um, aspects of it, we, uh, we kind of made a, made a conscious um, decision to, to just, and you know what? And you know what? For this instance, in this scenario, I think that makes perfect sense. Why yeah, not? Well, you know, you're dealing with the you. occult. You're dealing with rituals. God knows there are hundreds of rituals out there. Create one. Make one up. You know, for the yeah. film. Also, with all of the drawing on the floor, I didn't want to really invoke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was a, it was an old house too. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Anna Bray plays Cora's sister, uh, who is Jennifer Lafleur. She did great as well. What kind of backstory did you build for the two sisters? Uh, we really don't get. We get some information here and there. But did mm -hmm. you need to build a backstory for the sisters in order to make your interactions with her go to your satisfaction? Definitely. I mean, we didn't really like sit down and write anything out, but I think it was clear from the story, you know, that she's the perfect daughter. She is the daughter that, you know, did everything right, got all the good grades in school, is like this awesome cop. She's you know, definitely. I mean, I identified with that because my sister is seven years older than I am, mm -hmm. you know, and she's valedictorian of our high school. And I was the kid that was like sneaking out of my window and like trying to figure out ways to not have my parents know that I was out hanging like <laughs> with my rebel friends. Um, and so and she like did my sister did like nothing wrong. Right. So there was definitely that was kind of there inherently. Um, and also Jen is just such a great open actor that sometimes you can sit across for someone and you can see like a history within their eyes, you know, like there were scenes when we were in 
the prison when we have these scenes for, from present day that like there's just something unspoken between the two of us that mm -hmm. it really felt like we had a history and that we were sisters yeah um and it was a lot of it was just built into the dialogue and if you can like play that and if you know who you are when you come into the scene like it automatically just sort of blossoms from there so we didn't talk too much about it but there were times where we were like well obviously you're the you're the good sister and i'm the bad one the rebellious one uh thomas yeah. we're almost out of time i have one last question because I I debated whether asking this question or not, but I know people that are going to uh -oh. watch this film are going to have the same question I'm about to ask. So this is tiptoeing through the spoiler landmine, so we're going to be very right. careful. Making, making me nervous. We're going to be right. very careful. But in the group session, the grief group session, the, we yes, see the you group. you see the person that you think you saw. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. No, that was my question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that was uh we won't get into that but i'll tell you that that was kelly fraser's idea and it was genius okay yeah. so i'm like am i just seeing the same face again nope. okay all right no 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 <laughs> all right That's good perfect. eye though very good eye very intentional yeah, guys yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on here this movie is great for everybody watching it's premiering exclusively on shutter april and 20th. amc plus amc plus shutter Definitely check it out. It's called From Black. It stars Anna Camp. Written, co-written and directed by our, uh, Thomas Marchese. This movie is great. It has a little bit of everything. It will scare the crap out of you. There's <laughs> plenty of blood, gore, demons, rituals. You name it, this yeah. has it. Congratulations to the <laughs> both of you. I want to thank our audience, those of you who are tuning in live and those who will be watching later on. On behalf of Anna... Thomas and myself, stay safe and stay walking. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.